Let's talk about getting healthy. This is Genesis Healthy Heart Kitchen Weekend with your host, Ken Crokin. Welcome back to the Genesis Healthy Heart Kitchen. I'm Ken Crokin, and joining me this week, we have two guests from the Genesis Heart Institute. Uh, the first being Marsha Brewer, who is the director. What, what is your title, Marsha? Director of Cardiovascular Services. Wow, so you're like the big cheese. You're the big boss. You're the... I'm getting bigger. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> and we're also joined by uh, Kelly LaFriends, who is an exercise physiologist. You got Did it. I get that right? Yep. All right, cool. Well, ladies, um, we've invited you here to play a game we call... Do you think this tastes okay? <laughs> this like so uh, we're about two things today in the kitchen. Uh, first, we're going to um, uh, try something we've never tried before. This is influenced by uh, Chef Toby Christensen at the Wood Fire Grill. It's tandoori chicken. Have you had tandoori before? I have. I yeah. Have uh, and normally, you know, people don't make it at home because you don't have that little earthen oven to cook it in, right? Well, it, it can be done without, and so we're gonna try that today, and you'll be the judge and tell me how we did. Uh, we're also on our endless quest to find some way to make Brussels sprouts edible without like bacon. dumping a lot of bacon <laughs> all over them or something, <laughs> uh, and yeah. obviating the whole purpose. So um, uh, why don't we get going with you first, Marsha. Um, low, no fat, zero fat um, Greek yogurt is the base. Yep. And then could you um, tell us each of those ingredients and then combine them for us? I'd love to, but I don't know what I'm doing. Well, just read the bottle. Oh, read yeah. the bottle. So that's uh, smoked paprika. Yeah. So I we're going to put it. that in. Okay. Um, and then this would be cumin seeds. Yeah, cumin. So, and that's two yeah. tablespoons, uh, teaspoons of that. Whoa. A lot of cumin. This is coriander. Oh, I love coriander. Yeah, ground coriander. And these are the spices that give it that sort of Asian flair. What the heck is that? Ground fresh uh, chili it's, paste. It's chili paste. Ooh. It's garlic chili paste. So we'll add that. I'm going to like this. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. You can't go wrong with cinnamon. cinnamon. Keep going here. This one is allspice. Allspice. Again, West one, Indies. one teaspoon of everything except for the cumin, which was two teaspoons. And... Cayenne, cayenne yeah, pepper. Yeah, cayenne pepper. Uh, and also black pepper. I've combined the two in there. That's a lot of red pepper. Yeah, you bet. And how about that uh, lemon juice there? About, about a tablespoon of lemon juice. So um, now we need you to combine that. Uh, let me grab a whisk for you. Um, so okay. you mix that up. And I'm going to ask Kelly, what the heck is an exercise <laughs> physiologist? Well, what do you do exactly? I work We're in, suspicious of you, Kelly. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you my diploma. <laughs> um, what cardiac rehab is, it's a monitored exercise program. So after people have open heart surgery, mm -hmm. heart attacks, stents, mm -hmm. um, their doctor mm -hmm. will send them to a program called cardiac rehab. Mm -hmm. That's where we come in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess it's, it's fun. pretty important <laughs> that people um, get active as soon as possible, but in a very controlled environment. Right. They so, used to have heart attack patients, you know, lie in bed for months on months, and now right after they go in for yeah. stents, a couple hours later, off bed rest, there they are right. walking down the halls. That yeah. was a treatment in the 60s. They thought my dad had a heart attack and put him in bed in the hospital for a solid month of bed rest. They wouldn't even let you feed yourself. No kidding. He didn't have a heart attack. It doesn't sound altogether <laughs> bad, Marsha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Try to be in bed a month and get up. She'll tell you what happens I, to your muscles. I hear you. Nothing good. I hear Nothing you. Nothing good happens. Um, how yeah. are you doing on the... So, I am ready. So, um, yeah, this feels about, about the right consistency. Um, because we worry a lot about contamination, especially with chicken, uh, this was washed, patted dry, and uh, placed in this bag. Uh, before, could you please get the uh, whoop, get the contents of of that in here? And you might need a spoon or a spatula, which oh happily we have to get it all in. In your beautiful kitchen, right? I'll okay. try you can. Very good. Awesome. Now, Marcia, you're um, somewhat new. 
I to am. Uh, Genesis and the Heart Institute program. And the Quad um, Cities. Pardon? And the Quad Cities. Yeah. So uh, where did you come to us from? I moved here from Northwest Indiana. Oh, well, so you really you really moved up on this one. I kept it in the I states. <laughs> I, um, I was the director of cardiology mm -hmm. for IU Health LaPorte for over 20 years. And then I went to- And that would be Indiana University. LaPorte, right, IU. in LaPorte. Okay. LaPorte's right between Michigan City and South right Bend. Right in the sink. Okay. Yeah. And then I moved um, in 2012 over towards Merrillville and was the director mm -hmm. of the Methodist Hospital Systems of Gary and Maryville. Uh huh. Always in cardiology. Always in heart institutes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see, um, we're just gonna mush this around until it's well coated, um, and uh, ideally you'd leave this in here for 24 hours. Very nice. Uh, put it in the fridge, and uh, don't forget to flip it over once and again. Just so you know, it, it, uh, the, uh, the coating gets gets on that. So um, we're going to leave that there and work on our Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> While we do that, um, well, let me just tell you what I'm doing. Um, some garlic infused um, uh, olive oil in the pan here. Plus, we're going to um, mince some garlic and. Um, are you good at garlic chopping and peeling? I got it. All right. Wait, why don't you have a pampered chef pusher? Well, we don't we don't want it mushed. Well, <laughs> it'll mess. No, I'm sorry. Here's what I'm trying to, to uh, um, take the paper off that. Oh, all right. Right. Now my hands are going to stink. Often just a sharp wrap is, is uh, better. By a brutish man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you got one handy. There you go. And it kind of pops right off. And then just give that a rough chop, and I the uh, the tip. Now, Kelly, you're not you're not a cook. I'm working on it. All I right. buy my garlic already minced. And I'm uh -huh. just scooping it out. <laughs> I cheat. We we believe in fresh. Okay. Yeah. Um, it does. So, um, Marsha, that's good enough. Where I wanted to go with this was, uh, let me take over there. Uh, if it asks for minced. Um, uh, just give it uh, the roughest of chops to get it started. Eh, that's too much stem there. Um, and then a way that, that gets this minced uh, quicker, faster, particularly if it's already called for in the recipe, um, is using some kosher salt uh, on there. Uh, the salt kind of helps uh, turn the, uh, the garlic into a, into a paste. Well, I learned a new trick today. See, there you go. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll chop that for just another minute or two. Well, normally we'd like it a little finer, but we're gonna move this along. Okay, so into the uh, oil, about a tablespoon and a half, we put the garlic. We're gonna let that cook a little bit. The, um, the Brussels sprouts uh, were, I removed the stems, uh, removed any of the wilted leaves, um, uh, parboiled for about three minutes, shocked it in ice water to make it stay that green color, and, um, uh, and just kept it in the fridge overnight. I, a lot of these things, it's, it's great to be able to uh, do the prep the day before, and then you just assemble, you know, that that's nice. at the time. That's, that's always uh, handy, I think. So um, anyway, um, Marsha, the big news at the Genesis Heart Institute these days is TAVR. Um, Genesis was the first to introduce that procedure, and it's really changing lives in especially older patients. Right. What the heck is a TAVR procedure? Well, you're right. TAVR is a procedure where we go in and, and we put in an artificial aortic valve. And we are one of the very few that provide this service mm -hmm. outside of Chicago, mm -hmm. Iowa City, a few other programs, but not very many because it's so specialized. Mm -hmm. You need some excellent cardiologist and um, an open heart surgeon to back you up. Mm -hmm. So it's transaortic 
valve replacement is the actual term for TAVR. Mm -hmm. We've done about 60 now and very, very good outcomes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, uh, by the way, these are fennel seeds that were, once the uh, garlic gets soft, um, fennel seeds, uh, some rosemary, and a bunch of thyme sprigs. Oh, now I'm going to have to sing that song. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have any parsley or sage at this point. That's cooking a little too much, I can tell, because the garlic is browning too quickly. Yep. Um, uh, we're going to add a tablespoon or so of butter to the mixture. Um, now, what the beauty of Taver, as I understand it, is um, because, it I'm sorry, Taver, say the words. Trans aortic valve, valve replacement. replacement. Yeah. And it's a, um, uh, it's a minimally invasive procedure or a less invasive procedure. Instead and of open heart surgery where they would slice your sternum in mm -hmm. and go in, we go in through cannulas throughout your body and snake that valve up there on a balloon and leave it there right in place. Well, and that's mm -hmm. made a huge difference for uh, patients who are um, not good candidates for open heart surgery. Yeah. So older people who are um, uh, having valve issues uh, are getting a second leaf, a lease on life. You're right. Um, most, most of them can't survive the surgery. Right. They have um, a lot of issues and they feel very, very, very sick. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes are having a lot of difficulty breathing. Mm -hmm. They come out with a second lease on life. Yeah. Um, and because uh, having a, 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 a faulty valve uh, is no fun at all. Um, yeah. It leaves people feeling tired and weak and uh, Quality of life is, is greatly enhanced by uh, doing this valve thing. Matter of fact, we do a quality of life test pre and post valve. Is that a fact? It's a very important measure. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be performing these very complicated, sophisticated procedures, you want to make sure you're doing the right thing for the patient. Right. And making their life better, mm -hmm. not causing more problems than right. you're solving. So it's a very rewarding procedure. There's a humongous team involved with it. I watched um, two the other day, Tuesday yeah. night. How many people are in the um, OR to do these? Well, it's a hybrid room. It's actually a cath lab on steroids, we call uh -huh. it. It's a procedure room with a, a beautiful imaging equipment, the ability to um, perform open heart surgery should you have an untoward outcome. Uh huh. So you have about 16 people. Present right. with you. It's, it's an awful lot of people. But the outcomes have been extraordinarily good. Extraordinarily. And, yeah. and we, um, we've had some very challenging patients, mm -hmm. but uh, we have some talented staff and physicians right. at Genesis. And that is one of the things that drew me to this program. I wanted a program with Taver, and I found one. All right, great. Yep. Um, we've put the uh, Brussels sprouts in. Uh, we're mostly just trying to get them brown at this point, and you put them in cut side down. Um, the, the cast iron is particularly good, but any kind of a um, heavy skillet will work. I've been taking a cast iron skillet from home to home as I move. Well, I, I love it. <laughs> Kelly, does your grandmother have cast iron skillets? My mom got them from her, okay, and I dropped it on my toe, and I was like, oh, oh. Ben, so I'm well, not the biggest sure, fan. <laughs> make sure you call dibs on it okay. now, uh, because an, 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 a seasoned a, is what a you want. A seasoned pan is worth its weight in gold. Do not right. overwash it. So, so uh, really, not a lot of soap on those. Oh right. no, yeah, oh, it just ruins them. Wash mine with water, and, <laughs> and then you dry it on the stove I'll as teach well it. to can. make sure okay, you don't get you. any rust. She's my neighbor. She's going to come over and get. A lesson on how to excellent, work Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, here's the tandoori chicken 24 hours later. Imagine if you will. Mm. Okay, um, now because we don't have the tandoori oven, you've got to use one of these roasting pans with a rack on it. And um, uh, let's see if I can do this without making a big mess. <laughs> um, I wish this was more heavily coated, but you want the air to go around the meat. So kind of arrange it in a way that maximizes that. Um, you'll want to cook it at 
425, 450, you know, a, a real hot oven. Um, cook it this way for about 30 minutes and do not open the door, Marsha. I know how impatient you can get. So <laughs> don't open the door. Um, come on, come out of there. Well, we'll still be able to smell how wonderful right, it is. You will. All right. And, um, <laughs> uh, you are struggling, Ken. Yeah, well, gloves would have helped, but I'm trying to. Ew. Anyway, so um, keep it up so that the air is getting on both sides. And I also find convection ovens do this better uh, than regular ovens, but I'm sure it'll come out fine. Um, you might want to, uh, particularly on these because they haven't been cooking very long, um, get some of the, uh, the, the, the marinade or the coating and uh, add it on there. So again, 30 minutes on one side, uh, don't open the door, uh, 20 minutes on the other side, and then uh, just turn the oven off and let it be in there for another 30 minutes or so. Ooh, that's the uh, trick. Yeah. Um, well, it's hot air. You know, that's what we're, that's what we're doing here. Um, okay, so uh, we're back to these, and let's see how we're doing. I don't see brown, so I'm going to turn this up a bit. Ken, I'm calling you out. We can't eat those now. Uh, why is that? Well, oh, because of contamination. Raw, raw yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Let me get rid of those. Uh, my test ones. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Here, this will cut any germs. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lemon is good for whatever ails you. Um, Kelly, could you talk to us about the rehabilitation of TAVR patients? Yeah, absolutely. We see them pretty close once they come out of surgery, pretty much as soon as all the tubes are out. We start mm -hmm. walking them, talking them. We do their education classes there at mm -hmm. Genesis. Um, yeah, and then a couple of weeks after that, they come to the outpatient side of things where we torture them some more. Uh -huh. It's pretty great. <laughs> it's torture with a smile, I like to think, but, so it's okay. But I bet people are very pleased to be able to do things they haven't been able to do before. Oh, absolutely. We see yeah. them on the pre-op side, too. Mm -hmm. So we see them before surgery. And to see someone's complete transition mm -hmm. from, you know, barely being able to walk 200 feet to walking 15, 30 minutes on a treadmill, it's great. Yeah. Uh, that's got to be huge for people. Oh, I love What's it. the oldest patient we've had? I, I'm not sure. I, I believe someone was in, in his nineties. A gentleman in I, his nineties. I think I heard that rumor, but I sure, yeah. I sure can't confirm it. Yeah, I think we something? did have a night. But if you're a young at heart sure. and able to survive and mm -hmm. want to live, why? We're willing. Yeah. Um, what What else is new at the Heart Institute these days, um, Marsha? Why don't you talk a little bit about the structure of the Heart Institute? It's a, essentially a joint venture uh, between Genesis Health System and Cardiovascular Medicine PC? Correct. Um, we have a wonderful facility. It's mm -hmm. right there on the campus, and it's attached to the hospital via mm -hmm. Skywalk. It's really beautiful. And up on the third floor are around 20-some practitioners, uh, interventional cardiologists, cardiologists, structural heart, um, those that specialize in reading the echoes. There's a really wide variety of experts upstairs. And then on the second floor is testing. They um, perform the same testing on both sides. One is a Genesis run and the other is uh, the CVM physician. So mm -hmm. that we cover a wide array of insurance needs mm -hmm. and meet the needs of the patients very well. And then on the first floor is cardiac rehab, which is huge, beautiful, state-of-the-art equipment, great staff as Kelly can attest to uh, and then bias. yeah a little bias. <laughs> we have the uh, CB physicians there the uh, surgeons Dr. Geis's office and staff and then there's also a pediatric mm -hmm. surgeon that comes um, I'm not sure she's there all the time but mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Dr. Piovitz this would mm -hmm. be yeah. Right and so if your children have congenital heart they'll see you mm -hmm. in her office. We, yeah. we don't provide the services as far as surgery but the consults and follow-up right here right. in Davenport. Which is really great um, is. for people yeah. who, um, you know, driving back and forth to Iowa City is not as attractive as it sounds, you no. know. With, um, when with a crying baby, yeah, really with, not when attractive. Yeah, when your little one is um, needing attention. 
Um, and then I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Adler Auditorium downstairs. It's drop dead gorgeous auditorium mm -hmm. where we have all of our conferences and an awful lot of education for not only staff and physicians, but the community mm -hmm. uses it. Yeah. It just got redone too, and it looks great. Yeah, it's it really does. Yeah. Uh, new, new sound. Very um, impressive. I've just put some, um, the finishing touches here are some uh, sherry vinegar. Uh, what mm -hmm. if you can't find sherry vinegar? Everything we've had today is pretty easily found. Um, but the, uh, if you don't find sherry vinegar, white wine will do. Do in a pinch. Um, okay, so let's imagine that this has been cooking for about an hour now. And uh, I did a batch at home this morning. Check. <laughs> and uh, uh, for, you to, for you to test, it kind of looks like tandoori, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, suffer the, the lack of the tandoori oven itself, I don't think. So, um, okay. So, this is cooked, Marsha. Don't, <laughs> don't complain to me. Uh, I use dark meat. Um, uh, breast would be, it's a leaner, uh, so it, it might be a little bit healthier, but... I just don't think you can beat the flavor of um, uh, of the dark of the dark meat, uh, thighs and and legs. And it's moister. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Um, I wish I had a spoon that I could get this out with. Um, well, we'll use a spatula. That'll do. Okay. Marcia, you want to grab a seat and. Um, uh, <laughs> and and try this on. You have to you have to say it's good. You have to say it's good while you. Um, oh, we don't have a seat. Um, we'll share. Um, you have to say it's good while we're on while we're on camera, and then you can tell me later what you really think. Um, just to uh, jazz this up a little bit, I'm putting a little feta. Um, Cheese with the Brussels sprouts. So okay. Will be, this be your first bite of Brussels sprouts? It ever? will. Well, I'm I'm real curious to see what you think. I've I've not found much about Brussels sprouts to like, but I'm gonna try this new recipe myself at home and see how I feel about it. You don't like Brussels sprouts? No, I really don't. I don't get Brussels sprouts. Those aren't bad. Yeah. I could eat those. I'm so partial to the bacon ones. <laughs> <laughs> but, <this is, laughs> but they're not healthy at all. Yeah. This is good. I can do it. All right. I shall make it for my family. <laughs> okay, because it's healthier. And, me. <laughs> and the neighbor. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Now, what about the chicken, though? You got to try that. Okay. I know I'm going to like mm. that, Kim. That is an awful lot of uh, spices to prepare. Yeah. Can you, can you buy the mix? Ahead of time? No, you can't. You have to make it yourself, Marsha. I just meant the spice. <laughs> that That's is good. delicious. What do you think? That's really good. Does it taste mm -hmm. like the tandoori you've had in commercial? Okay. Yes, it does. In an All Indian right. restaurant, I can tell you it tastes just Excellent. like it. Excellent. Excellent. So, listen, the Heart Institute, um, we, by the way, we will suspend the no talking with your mouth full rule so you can feel free to chat while you <laughs> We're eat. Good. Um, the Genesis Heart Institute has um, just so many modalities of treatment that um, people should really go to the website and we'll be showing the, um, the, the URL address, the web address uh, here at, toward the end of the program so people can uh, make a note and go look at it. But um, uh, so we're treating patients with heart disease uh, with medication, uh, with um, stents. Uh, full-blown surgery uh, and minimally invasive and uh, minimally invasive are just becoming more and more commonplace aren't they they are yeah and when patients are looking for a surgeon that that's one of the things that draws them to the area in addition to the experience yeah you really want an experienced heart surgeon and we have a very experienced dr. Geis yeah well and with our campus optimization construction project right now um, very soon we're going to have um, literally state-of-the-art uh, operating rooms as well. Yes. But people are already traveling to Genesis from great distances to get 
uh, these services now. They are. Yeah. I'm amazed. And our heart attack program is just hands down excellent. We have a very, very good track record for short door to balloon times, including transfers in. Right. So if you have your heart attack in a surrounding mm -hmm. area, they get it to us very timely and we treat it timely. Let me, um, let me talk about that just a little bit because I want to make sure I understand this correctly. The national standard for door to dilation is 60 minutes. That's the goal. 90 minutes, okay. Um, uh, most hospitals are not achieving that right now. And last year, we had every single one of our patients door to dilation in under 60 and one at 18 minutes. We're very good, we're very yeah. blessed. So do you wear track shoes or how do you, how you, know, do you do that? To be honest, when it happens during the day, we're all here, hands on deck, mm -hmm. and the patients they kind of blow through the ER on mm -hmm. a stretcher and wave and keep going straight right. to the cath lab these mm -hmm. days, and that's where we do the full workup and yeah. get, get it going. Um, at night, mm -hmm. a lot of the staff members live very close to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah. They, have, they usually are here in well under 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really important for consumers to understand that not all emergency departments are equal. Um, and uh, uh, there are some that are uh, prepared for certain events more than others. And the East Genesis Campus um, uh, ER is, is primed for cardiac care. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, you know, it, when, when I get my inevitable heart attack, Marsha, oh, drive like me that. past as many other emergency departments as you need to to get me there because getting to any emergency department is not really the goal. You want to get to one that's equipped to respond. And American Heart has a wonderful campaign. Mm -hmm. um, they have an action registry, a STEMI protocol that you mm -hmm. can use. It's really a shame if you don't take advantage of that and um, gear up for the best care possible, mm -hmm. like, like Genesis has, yeah. and continues to do. We're continually measuring ourselves mm -hmm. against the best of the best, and we want to be the best. Yeah. Well, um, you were named one of uh, America's 50 top, top hospitals. Uh, Last year, the year before, I can't I remember I wasn't here, yeah. but I'm real proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the integration of care between those treating the patient and those rehabil uh, doing the rehabilitation work um, is also key, I would think. It is. Yeah. You need the whole continuum of care. Once we treat, we can't just say, okay, bye. Yeah. Have a nice life because they'll be right back there if they right. don't continue. And we want to get people to a place where they feel they, they are knowledgeable enough, Kelly, and comfortable enough that they can return then to normal community-based exercise programs like the yeah. Y. And our program offers a yeah. great education program along with it. So we don't just exercise them, we teach them as well. Terrific. And I think it's very beneficial. For well, them. ladies, thanks so much for being here on the Healthy Heart Kitchen. Eat your lunch now. <laughs> and uh, we'll see all of you here back next weekend on Healthy Heart Kitchen. Thanks for watching.